Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include To trust or not to trust, that is the question. The EU pushes for universal bank account access. EU costs and benefits, an impossible balancing act. There's little chance of Britain leaving the EU. And finally, EU Parliament Committee backs built-in speed limit for new vans. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage, the issue of the UK's membership of the European Union has been the subject of significant media attention and debate in recent months. From this, a referendum, a concept not seriously considered since the mid-1970s, appears to be something many now accept as inevitable. But, will our pol politicians really offer the people a democratic voice? This article looks at the current political landscape and asks the question, do we trust that our politicians will act in our interests or their own? The European Commission will set out on Wednesday plans for universal access to current accounts with banks, seeking to remedy an exclusion that Brussels calculates affects nearly 60 million adults across the European Union. In some countries, the proportion of citizens without current accounts is especially high. The Commission estimates, for instance, that 25 million people in Bulgaria and Romania do not have payment accounts, meaning they operate largely on a cash or barter basis. No one knows. If anyone asks you about the economic costs and benefits of leaving the European Union, that is almost always going to be the best answer. It is also the answer to most questions about the economic costs and benefits of staying in. These are not questions that economists or anyone else can give a sensible answer to, not least because no one can say with any confidence what the terms of Britain's non-membership of the EU would be. The Deputy Prime Minister has suggested that three million jobs rely directly on our participation in the European single market. To state the obvious, these jobs would not necessarily disappear if the country left the EU. Lord Lawson and other supporters of Britain's withdrawal would say that lifting the burden of European bureaucracy would create a lot more employment and income and open the eyes of British business to many opportunities available outside Europe. So, what do you think? Comment or email us with your thoughts. Will the United Kingdom still be a member of the European Union in 2020? Let us examine three scenarios. 1. The Conservatives win the 2015 election and David Cameron is able to redeem his promise to renegotiate Britain's membership terms and hold a referendum in 2017. 2. Labour wins the 2015 election and Ed Miliband sticks to his current position of opposing a referendum. 3. Labour wins the 2015 general election with Ed Miliband having changed his stance and promising a referendum on British membership of the EU. I, of course, have another solution. We rally 60% of the population down to ASDA, that's A-S-D-A to the posh folk, to buy saucepans, then it's off to London to stage a pots and pans revolution like the one undertaken in Iceland, overthrow the government, tell the bankers in the EU to take a hike, install a national treasury-backed currency and happy days! The top speed of vans in the European Union should be electronically limited to 120 kilometres or 75 miles per hour, according to a proposal backed by the European Parliament's Environment Committee. The plan is part of a debate on how to cut carbon emissions and improve the fuel efficiency of Europe's vehicles. It would only become law if approved by EU member states. I wonder how long it will take the kleptocrat buffoons to realise that the technology already exists to have RFID chips in speed limit signs that would act as a wireless beacon, triggering a vehicle's engine management system to govern the vehicle to the speed limit although I suspect that would have a dramatic effect on the revenue generated by speed cameras. Today in our video library, as you know, we have written and produced a new documentary, Betrayed, which we have submitted to the Operation Paul Revere contest at Infowars.com. 
We thought it would be interesting to take a look at some of the other videos that have been produced and so through the month of May I will pick out a daily Operation Paul Revere contest entry and provide a link to it on YouTube. Now speaking of YouTube, you could really help us a great deal with our documentary and contest entry by subscribing to our channel, rating our film Betrayed, either like or dislike, but I'd prefer like please, and most importantly sharing it with as many people as you possibly can. So without further ado, today's video which I have added to our Operation Paul Revere YouTube playlist, the completely hilarious Thank You Michelle by Derek Cummings. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the E Unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Join us in our live Question Time style online show, The Unit Interactive. Broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, the unit on Google+, links to the community page are below.